Hello, everyone, and welcome to Coffee with Canon. <laughs> I decided to have the show inside today because um, it's a rampant uh, usage of chainsaws right now out in my yard, and I, I just can't, I can't take the sound. It's driving me out of my mind, you know. Um, so I have a, so I woke up this morning and I look outside my front door and someone had delivered a dozen bagels, cream cheese, and a big box of Joe. Joe being coffee, of course. So in these cups. So welcome to, uh, to Coffee with Canon. I hope you guys start joining. Here you are. <laughs> How thoughtful, yeah, very thoughtful. I'm sure it was meant um, for my wife, you know. Uh, oh, am I sideways again? Oh, I cannot I cannot understand this. I'm showing that I'm not sideways, that I'm straight up, but I'm gonna have to put it like that. You know, I, I mean, this is this is nuts. Uh, how is it right now? I know it's, it's vertical now, but uh, let me put it down. I'm actually inside by my bar. Uh, I have a beautiful bar that I had built. Uh, uh, just turn my phone. If I do that, then it's no good, right? If I do that, how's that? Rotate device back. I think I just got to keep it like this for now. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, the bar is beautiful. I want to give you guys a, a little look at the bar. What do you think? Beautiful, right? And I have some uh, police cars, knickknacks up there. I got an English Bobby helmet. Can you see that? Some old police cars, and of course my favorite Cabernet. I shouldn't say I shouldn't say my favorite Cabernet. I should say the Cabernet that I can afford. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. I, and guess what? It was built. Uh, it was built by an Irishman named Mike Murphy, and uh, we used oak. Uh, I'm going to put this up a little higher. He used oak. You can hear the sound of that, right? It's solid as all hell. And whenever we have a family party or Thanksgiving, we had a lot of people over, uh, the bar comes in really handy. It, it's, it's amazing. You can see it. There we go. And it's all, it's made of oak, you know? And uh, what Irishman shouldn't have a bar, right? I think you have to have a bar. Uh, yeah, my man cave. Well, my kids take this over, my kids. My 26-year-old and 29-year-old kid. Uh, Auto-rotate in my drop-down menu. You know, I have tried that before, and I keep, I keep winding up going, uh, I could try it one time. Uh, I don't know what's going on now. I think I know I have a real problem. <laughs> Can you guys see me? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just, we're just gonna have to deal with it like this for now. I'll get this right one of these days. Uh, but so uh, you guys, last night, um, Jen J, beautiful, beautiful bar, Bill's Man Cave. Good afternoon, uh, Lord McKenzie, Jamie Johnson. I don't know if you guys caught me last night, but I wound up being on Newsmax. I was on Newsmax at 6 o'clock, and I was on uh, the 10 o'clock show um, with Ashley Banfield talking about the uh, the, the shooting on the, the set of the movie Rust with Alec Baldwin. And uh, there seems to be a lot of... Um, problems with that. Everyone now, of course, after the initial investigation is pointing uh, fingers at everyone else. They they send, I, I have the link for the earlier one. I just asked them to send me the link for the 1023 show. 12-step uh, woman, hello. Yeah, I'm supposed to use my coffee cup, my police off the cuff coffee cup. Well, you know, I think that I'm going to start to be on um, Newsmax a lot now. Uh, they were very happy with uh, with my performance, and so they said they want to use me. We'll see, you know, when cases come up. Uh, 
Lincoln Clay, I grew up, well, I was born in Astoria, Queens, and I grew up on Long Island, Le actually Levittown, Long Island. And um, then I moved uh, when I came on the police department. Well, before that, I moved into New York City. I lived in New York City for a while. And then when I went on the police department, uh, I moved out of the city. And we've been up in Westchester for over 30 years now. Uh, I, wa I didn't really want to raise my kids in New York City. So Westchester. So yeah, uh, it was pretty interesting. When they come to, they ask you, uh, would you come on the show? And of course they know, they know that you have um, credentials from, uh, you know, from recommendations from other people. They also may take a look at the Police Off The Cuff podcast. Um, and they, um, they, the first week I said, could I just go on by zoom? Cause I didn't really understand what they were doing. They drive a van, a huge van here. And the studio was right inside the van. So you just, it was right in my driveway. Just walk down my driveway, get in the van. I have a shirt and tie and a suit jacket, but I'm wearing jeans. So, cause they can only see waist up. And you go on TV and you have a little earpiece and they say, one minute, you're on. Uh, Sierra J, yes, my wife, is going to take her for a walk later on along the Hudson River. Uh, yeah, so it was interesting. And you know something? Could I have done as well as I did last night had I not uh, been doing police off the cuff for two and a half, almost three years? And the answer is no. I got so much experience interviewing people on uh, police off the cuff and police off the cuff real crime stories that I don't I don't even get nervous. I'm so confident, and that's amazing. That didn't just come to me overnight. That came to me from uh, from doing the show, from doing the police off the cuff show, from interviewing people, from interviewing celebrities, from interviewing just people with interesting interesting stories, and. It also comes from a, a knowledge that you have in the field that you're in. Uh, Catherine Bates, good afternoon. Mike Champlin, really neat. Uh, Christian Glock, uh, Lieutenant Pete. Thanks, Lieutenant Pete. Yeah, it's it's really cool, you know. And the coolest thing on the on the early one on Newsmax, on the front it said retired NYPD Sergeant Bill Cannon, police off the cuff podcast. So what kind of excellent. Um, Excellent free advertising was that on television, you know, a national station. Now, you think police off the cuff will go national? I hope so, right? Cheers. Coffee with Cannon. Join me, guys. The reason I decided, if you, if you just tuned in, the reason I decided to shoot inside today is because... Um, Again, we have chainsaw uh, festival outside. It's like every weekend they're cutting trees down around here, and it's so, so damn noisy that uh, I, you know, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't do it outside. So here we are inside with a cup of Joe and the police off the cuff cup and the dipped in butter on the other side. Someone wants us to make a shirt that says. Uh, I dip my melons in butter. Now I need to polish my rack. That's a lot to put on the front of a t-shirt. But uh, I said, that's classic. And a woman said that on Gisela's show. And it would be so funny to have a shirt made. But I don't know if you could fit all of that. Uh, Mr. Ruby, why didn't you lateral to an agency near New York? Because I always, always wanted to be NYPD. To me, and the NYPD was the greatest department in the world. And it, it still is. And I wanted to be on that department. And I never, ever considered lateraling to any other police department. I, NYPD was it for me. Uh, I don't know if I'll catch up with duty, Ron. You know something? He said, oh, he always calls me jokingly. He calls me superstar. And I said, I'll get rid of that name superstar if you give me 100,000 of your subscribers. And he just laughs, of course. Hey, he earned that. You know, he earned that. Uh, yeah, you know something? Oh, I, I think I told you guys yesterday, tomorrow, Halloween, 10-31-2021, is my 10-year anniversary retired from the NYPD. Is that unbelievable? Unbelievable. I've been out 10 years. But, you know, I didn't, when I first left the job in on October 31st, 2001, I had already been um, 
teaching at a college part-time. And so as soon as I retired, they offered me a full-time job right away. And I just jumped. I had no retirement. I had no time off. I went right from one job to another full-time job. And, you know, teaching, I liked teaching. I, I still like it. I liked it and I did it for, well, I was, I, the total time I did it was 10 and a half years because I was teaching part-time at the same college um, while I was on the police department. And in a large way, that's how I was able to pay for my, both my son's college with a little bit of help from my father-in-law, but he maybe contributed 15%, 20%. And um, my kids got out of college not owing a dime in student loans. And I credit that to myself, my wife, and my father-in-law. Imagine paying cash, and it was probably uh, total, an estimate, about $350,000. And... Uh, my kids, again, I, I'm proud of that. They got out of college. They don't owe a dime. So they go right into their profession not having to pay student loans. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that because I, I actually worked three jobs to make that happen. And my wife uh, has worked our entire marriage. She's had a job uh, our entire marriage, and she has a big job. I'll just put it that way. She works for an A-list movie star. I won't tell you who he is. But because she would kill me if I did, but she always liked to keep his business secret. But yeah, I'm proud of that, that I, did, I was able to do that for my kids. I grew up, I was one of eight kids. I was the third oldest of eight kids. So that was uh, not even an option for my parents, you know. Uh, uh, Emily King, hey, Bill from the UK, son at uni, saved for 18 years, but it still wasn't enough to avoid student loans. Emily, you did the best you could, you know? That's all you can do, you know? I just happened to have uh, a good second job and then a great pension, and then I uh, I got hired full-time and I was able to use that full-time teaching job to totally pay for my kids' college. I used to cringe when I had to send, for each semester I'd have to send, I think it was either 21 or $22,000 just electronically, boom! Gone, $22,000. And I used to be like, oh my God, my parents paid fourteen nine ninety for their house in Levittown when we first moved there in the early or middle 60s, whatever it was, fourteen nine ninety. Now you can't even get half a car for that, a car, right? I have a, um, an Acura RDX, which I lease, and to buy that car is like $46,000. I'm like... <laughs> Why would I buy it? I just leased the damn thing. Every three three years, I get a brand new car, which I love. In fact, this April, I have to return it. Jamie Johnson, my daughter, is getting her doctorate. Congrats to your daughter, Free Society. I'm trying not to think about that. I have a sophomore in high school. You know, you got to try to save a little bit. If you can't save, you know, you just, just do the best you can. My son, my oldest son, is in cybersecurity. He works remotely. He's actually moving to Denver, Colorado, next week but he's in cybersecurity and he has a master's degree from the University of Edinburgh <laughs> in Scotland, which was, was a great experience for him. Um, my youngest son, Jake, he's a film editor and he's really pretty damn good at it. He's been doing that two or three years, but he just got a, he just got a big raise and um, he's very talented, but you know, those jobs are tough too because you're sitting at a computer screen eight, 10 hours a day. But there is some satisfaction to that, you know. Uh, Princess, Princess Mitch, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while. I'm Lee King. Yes, Edinburgh, lovely place. Uh, Sierra J, that's awesome. Cybersecurity, you, you know that. Cybersecurity is the field to be in right now. It's just, uh, you know, all the crime is, not all, but much of the crime has gone off the street and moved to the internet, you know. Cheers. Coffee with Cannon. Enjoy. So, yeah, it, it was interesting. Um, John R. Bear, welcome to the bucket. Thank you, John. You're a member of uh, the, our YouTube family, John R. Bear, and thank you for being part of the, uh, the, the first tier, the bucket. We love that. All of our tiers have a sense of humor to the mic. I, I hope you guys realize that. Uh, Emily King, cheers, beer here. Where's your sidekick, Phil? He's, he's straight out of Brooklyn. He's here. <laughs> I hope he's up by now. He should be up. I don't think he's still in bed. Phil's a hardworking guy, you know. I love Phil, man. What a what a what a great uh, co-host, you know. And um, he just started doing this about three or four months ago, and I 
sort of picked them out of a lot of different people. And it's funny when you do this, and I've been doing, I've done over, I think I've done over 400 shows now. And Mark and I used to do Police Off the Cuff, which was more like a variety show, more like highlighting the careers of, um, of great cops and talking about stories like that. And then I wanted to do more of the real crime stuff. And I started doing it by myself. And I started uh, experimenting by interviewing people, different people that were great NYPD cops. And then I started interview. I interviewed Phil about about uh, three or four times. And I had already, there's Phil Grimaldi. <laughs> he can't stay off the air. I was just talking about you, Phil. And I had been on a TV show with Phil called The Perfect Murder. So I already knew him and we got along really well. So I sort of gave him a tryout and he's a natural. He's like a, a Joe Pesci natural, you know, he's just really good at it. And if anything, I got to calm him down. Sometimes he talks too much, but he's, he's an excellent co-host. He's very knowledgeable about investigation. And, he, you know, I love to use that expression. He can walk the walk and he can talk the talk. He can do both. Not everyone can do both, but he can do both. So he's like a perfect, perfect co-host. Cheers for Coffee with Cannon. Uh, great to see all you guys. You know, I hate, I sound like so ad nauseum, but if, you pl if you're not subscribed, please go to our YouTube, subscribe, hit the subscribe button and uh, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell. Soldier Girl, I've heard of that show. Yeah, we were on a show called The Perfect Murder and we did, I think, two episodes. I did a total of six episodes on the perfect murder and uh four i played a detective and two i was like a talking head i played myself you know sergeant so one's canon from the not north homicide squad <laughs> phil grimaldi's asking what am i a clown you know that great scene with joe pesci <laughs> when he asked <laughs> when, when he asked that question in the movie great 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 scene you know so um i you know i got some uh we got some shows coming up that uh that I think um, are pretty interesting. And Michelle McPhee, who's a writer, she wrote an amazing book called Mayhem. And it's about the Boston Marathon bombing. And she does a really great deep dive investigative report in this book, Mayhem. And I'm halfway through the book now. It's, it's brilliantly written. And the stuff that she... Uh, the stuff that she came up with in this book about the investigation to the Zarnayev brothers... Tamerlan and Zokar Zanayev that are, in fact, the Boston bombers. And the Supreme Court is looking at the case of Zokar uh, Zanayev to determine whether, in fact, he can get the death penalty. If anyone deserves the death penalty, it's that uh, little weasel, you know. Uh, so we're, we're going to do a show on that. And we're going to, it'll be myself and Phil, Michelle McPhee, and a, a Bostonian native named Cliff Moylan, who's an actor who played the part of Sergeant McClellan, who was from the Watertown police, who shot it out with the, um, the Zarnayev brothers in one of the most 15 to 20 minute gunfight they had. And uh, some officers were seriously wounded. No one was, in that incident, no one was killed in that shootout. There was an officer from a, a college police officer that was killed earlier that night by the Zarnayev brothers. So. We're gonna do a show on that. And we're also gonna do a show on Whitey Bulger, uh, who was the sort of an Irish mobster from Boston, but vicious, uh, a murderer, a killer, and sort of was allowed to, to work. Uh, he was an informant for the FBI. So he was sort of allowed to ply his trade without the threat of getting arrested or because he was supplying information to the FBI. Cheers. So is that something you guys would like to, uh, will you guys listen to, the, the story of Whitey Bulger? Uh, that's another book that Michelle McPhee has. I'm trying to bring more interesting shows, shows that uh, Mayhem, Kathy Bates, yo, uh, Meredith Ahern Tamillo, um, Amanda Lee Barry, so great to chat with you guys. PX, yeah, the coffee, coffee with Cannon. Yes, Whitey Bulger. So I think that could be a really, really interesting show. See, one of the things that I don't know if a lot of you guys 
understand or appreciate, and you, you don't have to, that when we do these shows, um, it takes a lot of research sometimes. You can't just step up to the microphone. Uh, Phil Grimaldi, thanks, Bill, for the opportunity to be on Police Off the Cuff. Well, Phil, you earned it. You're a good broadcaster. And uh, so these shows that we're planning on doing um, with about Whitey Bulger and about the Zarnayev brothers, is that something? Give me a one in the chat if that's something you guys would be very interested in. Because we can't just keep doing uh, just real crime. Oh, that is real crime. Uh, Brooklyn Shiloh, the Boston bombing book. Yes, it is very interesting. One, so you guys are interested in the uh, Boston <clears throat> Marathon bombing case and also uh, the Whitey Bulger case, which we're going to attack both. Uh, I also uh, interviewed a, f a few months ago a, a gentleman named Jonathan Aprilier, and he's a war, he's actually a war photographer, and he was taken hostage for three months by some terrorists when he was on the scene. Uh, and he has an unbelievable story. And he's now been covering the southern border uh, with all of this illegal immigration. And he messaged me yesterday and he wants to come back on the show to report on what he's found. I think that will be fascinating. I don't know if, you, is that something you guys would like? Jonathan Apollier, who's a French guy, uh, a Frenchman by birth, but he grew up in the United States. And he's a war photographer and he's been on the border uh, researching and taking pictures of the illegal crossings at the border. And he's ready. He wants to come on the show and tell his story. I think it will be fascinating. What do you guys think? I, I, it, looks, it looks pretty interesting, right? Um, not living in one of the border states. We just, you know, see what we see on the news. Uh, there's certain states in this country. New York is one of them. That's a sanctuary state that law enforcement isn't even allowed to help ICE when they come up with illegals. They're not allowed to tell ICE when they've arrested an illegal so that they can pick them up. I mean, talk about disregarding the, the law. Uh, there, there's a huge case of that. Shalma Tanj, Chaz's story was beautiful. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Shalma. And you're from Dominica. I remember where you're from. That's... Uh, Free society. Okay, see what happens. Definitely, Sue Emma, I'm in California. Border state issues for sure. Uh, CJ, good morning, Bill. Chat here and listening with can't type nerve problem, but he, I'm here. Thank you so much, CG, for being here. Uh, Jamie Johnson at Albi. He's retired NYPD. Mo Beans, New Jersey. Insane. Insane. So if you just tuned in, this is Coffee with Cannon. We're doing it on a Saturday morning. And again, here I'm vertical because my phone is something's going on where the chat's going one way and I'm going the other way. And you guys say I'm upside down. So um, I just think it'll be interesting to, uh, especially someone like Michelle McPhee, who wrote Mayhem on the Boston Marathon. I was That always intrigued me, the Boston Marathon bombing, uh, the investigation, uh, you know, how these guys... Um, I, uh, how these guys get into country. John Bear, I take my coffee with just milk, no sugar, just a little bit of milk. I stopped using sugar and coffee years ago. That doesn't mean I don't eat a lot of sugar. I just don't put it in my coffee. Uh, Holy Cats, the National Guard is assisting on helping the rafters off and onto the U.S. soil. J.D. Bomber, I say coffee. That's right. That's the New York way, coffee. You know, we say coffee. Uh, and I, I think the Midwest, they say coffee. Coffee, right? Yeah, the Boston Marathon, the, the story is unbelievable. And uh, the guy, those two brothers were two evil uh, Chechenians. They're from Chechnya. And there's a whole tangled web on how they got into this country. Everything they got in this country was free. Their home was being paid for the, by the government. They were getting food stamps. They were getting wealth. I mean, disgusting, disgusting. And these guys were on the FBI's radar. And uh, if you read the book, if you read the book Mayhem, she tells a great story about uh, all the things that, that occurred. So, um, Mo Beans, New Jersey. Yes, Phil, it's depressing. Hey, single Joshua, Lisa, Lieutenant Pete is in the chat. Meglo, are you kidding, Bill? No, I'm not kidding. Get the book Mayhem by Michelle McPhee. Uh, you won't believe what you're... Uh, 
didn't want to get actually, you know, what happened was the older brother, Tamerlan uh, Zarnayev, got into a huge shoot. He was shot nine times by the Watertown police, and he was still alive, still fighting. And um, he um, actually came charging, and he was out of ammunition, threw the gun at the police. They tackled him, and his younger brother, Zokar, ran him over with an SUV. And he still... He was all tangled up and, you know, his body was all screwed up. And he was still fighting, with shot nine times and hit by the SUV. And they handcuffed him, put him in the back of the uh, EMS ambulance. And he was fighting, actually fighting on the uh, gurney in the ambulance, still fighting and handcuffed. And then when they got him to the hospital, um, he died in the hospital. Uh, it's an unbelievable story. And uh, then the story of... Zokor, he's the one they found hours later um, hiding in a boat, uh, in, in a, a boat that was uh, parked in someone's yard with a, a tarp over it. He was hiding on the inside of the boat. And um, one of the things I think is important to know about this case is that had they not been encountered by the Watertown police, uh, specifically, I think Sergeant McClellan was the first one. And it was I, I don't want to just say his name. He's a tremendous hero. Everyone from the Watertown police uh, that engaged these two is, I mean, the gunfight was like you would not believe. You know? And, and the, the uh, Zarnayev brothers were throwing pipe bombs and a actually um, pressure cooker bombs at them during this gunfight. It's just, it was just incredible. Anyway, my... What I was saying before was, had the Watertown police not encountered these two, they were on their way to New York City, to Times Square. So they were about to um, to wreak havoc in New York City, but they were encountered by the Watertown police, who no doubt saved probably hundreds of New York City lives in Times Square. You know, that's where they were headed. And there was a lot of... Um, in this story, there's a lot of great things. There's a lot of errors by law enforcement, as there is on any major investigation, but we're going to take a deep dive into that. I, I believe we actually have it booked, and I think it's going to be on the 30th of November. Uh, I'm actually going to go away next week, the 5th, 6th, the 5th through the 8th, I'm going to Florida. Um, it's my brother-in-law's 60th birthday, and we had pl this planned before uh, my wife's surgery, so my wife's going to stay home, and her mother's going to come and take care of her, but I'm going to go there with my two sons. Yeah, it should be good to get away. And I'll probably try to do at least one show from Florida, you know. Uh, I don't know. Morning coffee with Cannon in uh, Fort Myers? I don't know. Meglo, thanks. Have fun, Bill, she said. Yeah, morning coffee in Fort Myers, but uh, I think it'll be good. Uh, Brooklyn Shiloh, my family doesn't understand why I watch true crime. It's interesting, you know, it's interesting. I go, when I go to bed at night, I turn on the TV. The, one of my favorite shows is The First 48. And I did that, but I just love the stories. And I love to watch how they work the cases, which is, brings me back to, to, to what I used to do, you know. And uh, it's, it's, that's what I like to watch, you know. Uh, Fuzzy Doxy, I grew up in Florida, loved that state. Uh, Beatrice Martin, truth is stranger than fiction. Jackie Five, hi from the UK. Hello, Smee and uh, from and Marcella's in the chat. Hey, Meglo, and there's Lieutenant Pete. Tina Wright, Kathy Bates. Uh, I get yelled at for my ID discovery. Yeah, those, those some of the shows are really interesting, you know. And uh, Taylor, I live in Clearwater, Florida. If you're going to Fort Myers, you got to check out Sanibel as well. I've been to Sanibel. I, I that, in fact, that's where I believe the party is the first night. It's at, on Sanibel Island. Mickey V, hello from Sweden. Sierra J, she loves crime stories. That's that's so great. So uh, you guys, I just uh, if you tuned in late, I, I decided to 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 uh, do this episode inside because uh, outside is like yeah, like someone said before, it's chainsaw massacre on Saturday afternoon. All you hear is chainsaws cutting down trees. So. Uh, uh, that's why we're here sitting at my bar, and I can get you see the length of this bar. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? 
<laughs> Margo Sieg, hello, Emily King, how are you? Uh, Sonny Houlihan, in boat, under top, yes. Uh, they locked down the whole city of Boston then. Remember, um, what was it called? Uh, shelter in place. They had everyone in the entire city, there was a curfew. Shelter in place till they caught these two guys. And one of them, of course, wound up dead. And the other one, he was the youngest one, Zokar. He was shot numerous times too, because I believe Boston SWAT, like just, they unloaded on this boat. They fired a hundred and something shots and he got hit numerous times, but unfortunately he lived. Uh, I say that because, you know, people lost their legs. I think a three-year-old was killed in this bombing. People had horrific injuries and uh, it just, uh, I mean, look, read the book Mayhem. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's an amazing book. And um, Michelle McPhee is definitely uh, a friend of the show. Meredith Ahern, I wonder if Wadi tested positive for drugs. Uh, I think when I'm gone, I should let Phil Grimaldi do a few shows. <laughs> I don't know what he'll do them on. You know, he may he may start going onto Avenue U and grabbing some wise guys off the street and ask them if they want to be interviewed. You know, uh, <laughs> that's that's pretty funny. Um, never anger Boston SWAT. Tennessee girl cutting the tree so they won't get rolled on Halloween. Ooh. Halloween, as I said, tomorrow I'm. Been off. I retired from the police department 10 years ago, October 31st, 2001. Wow. Excuse me, 2011. 2011. So it's 10 years since I've been out. Seems like it went really fast. In one way, it went really fast. And in one way, when you look back at all the water under the bridge, there's still a lot of living in those years, you know? Uh, Sonny Houlihan, Governor DeSantis is the best. Yeah, Governor DeSantis from Florida is offering cops from all over the country a $5,000 bonus to come down to, uh, to Florida, to go on any Florida police department. That's amazing. Uh, Lieutenant Pete, thank you for the congratulations for me being out 10 years. It's, uh, it's a big part of your life. Almost, I did almost nearly 27, just under 20. I always say 27, but it's just under 27. Uh, yeah, time always flies by fast because, um, uh, you know, there's a, you guys remember the Beatles, John Lennon, he had a famous quote and I usually don't quote musicians, but I thought this was such a great quote. He says, life is what happens when you're busy making plans to do other things. That makes so much sense because it's so true, right? Till something interrupts you, um, making plans to do other things and you have to stop and take an inventory and, and do specifically what you have to do. The other expression I heard, uh, you know, another one, I'm sure I didn't make this up. Uh, you want to make God laugh, make plans. You've heard that one before, right? It's, uh, that's so true too, because the only one that's going to make plans is, is going to be the Lord, right? You know, he has plans for you, right? And I, I'm not that religious, religious of a guy. Uh, but, you know, I believe in some, uh, I do believe, you know. Uh, Soldier Girl, yes, 100%. Alan Saunders, Sue M, so true. It is so true, right? Uh, some quotes are great. Others, you know. Uh, Marjo Siegel, never live through life through the rearview mirror. That's 100%. You got to keep going forward. Keep going forward and facing life, right? Facing it because life is precious and you never know when it could be over, right? I don't want to be macabre, but that's the truth, right? Tweety US News, love your New York accent, Long Island. I'm from Connecticut, just a guess on your accent, Orange. I grew up on Long Island and I lived in the city and I worked in the city for 27 years in Manhattan North. So all the precincts north of 59th Street. My last 10, I was in Manhattan North Homicide Squad. So. You know, you find yourself a lot when you're in the police department talking street lingo. You use a lot of slang because that's the environment you're in. And uh, 
Woody Allen, two things you can't avoid in life, death and taxes. Yeah, that's true. I have my father who used to always say that. I used to hate hearing him say that, you know, but that's true. Uh, <laughs> Cheers. Coffee with Cannon. If you got coffee, give it a give it a slug. Taylor, my mom is from Levittown. Wow. Uh yeah, I did live a busy life and I'm still I still want to be busy. I still want to do things that keep me young, do things that make me happy. Uh, look, if I was offered a job in broadcasting, I'd take it. But right now, the second best thing, police off the cuff, real crime stories. <laughs> We're going to keep doing that. We're going to run it till the tires fall off, as they say, right? So coffee with cannon is one of them, you know, police off the cuff, real crime stories, police off the cuff, and coffee with cannon in the morning. You know, I don't want to add any more titles of backyard coffee. Coffee with Cannon, that's enough, you know, because today, as you can see, I'm not in the yard because of the chainsaw massacre going out on the, going on on the side of my house. Uh, thank you, Lieutenant Pete. Police off the cuff is the best. Uh, that's great. So, folks, I'm at, uh, I'm at over 36 minutes. I usually try to stay around 35-ish. I don't want to um, keep you guys here any longer because you got things to do. You got memories to make. You got things to do, right? You got plans to make. Uh, plans to do other things you know, while you're living your life, right? So uh, at this point, uh, I want to say have a great day. And thank you so much for uh, sitting here with me and having coffee with Canon. Good afternoon.